we're here back at the workshop um, just trying to get off this these flywheel bolts give you guys a little update um, Ryan did some work on getting the bolts out of the flywheel we got an issue with the last one I'll show you guys that now um, we're it's giving us some issues because this one here I actually had tried to remove that the first time so if you look closely if it zooms in on it if you look closely it's got some rounded up edges so I'm getting in Chris the guy that did all of the welding stuff for my care um, he's coming we're gonna try to either heat this or we're gonna put a bolt on it and try to take it off using sorry a nut weld a nut to it and try to take it off that way see if we can get this flywheel off and that back seal in tonight also um, I don't know if you're gonna see also what I'm gonna do tonight is take off the alternator to carry it to get that sorted as well um, gonna actually try to do that right now as I'm here waiting on Chris and then once he comes we'll try to get that gearbox sorry that flywheel bolt out Alright guys, as you see we have out the bolt I'm now going to try to take out that last bolt there and get to this oil seal So we have the flywheel off finally um, Now we'll attempt to take out the seal Just going to clean up there and make sure that it, the oil is actually coming from this seal and then you go from there. I've got the new oil seal here, as you see, genuine on the part. Um, hopefully, that will stop the leaking. And we're also gonna change from the OEM plug, um, sorry, the OEM bolts, and put in these ARP bolts now okay so we got the old um, crank seal here honestly it doesn't seem bad but I realized when I was taking it out it had more space on the right side than on the left so I guess that is where the oil was coming through okay a couple things I've noticed um, comparing the Genuine crank seal to the aftermarket crank seal. Genuine crank seal being this one that's on the left and the non-genuine on the right. One there is a different 
screw pattern around the edge as you can see and it also feels the metal support inside also feels harder than this one that's on the aftermarket well the non-genuine seal also what I realized the genuine seal already comes with grease packed inside well as you can see there's actually no grease in this one um, I'm gonna turn them over so you can see excuse the light um, again today I'm on my own so now if you look inside um, you can see that spring ring around the edge don't know if you're seeing it I'm um, gonna try to see if the camera will focus on it well there's a spring like um, going right around the circumference that is tighter than the spring that you're seeing here now on the non-genuine part so I think basically the genuine part as usual has a little better construction so hopefully that will work all right now um, just gonna make sure that all around there is clean from any debris or anything like that that may have come while it was pulling off the pulling off the old seal now this is the new seal here and like I said before the construction it feels harder everything like that so we're gonna just install it like even pushing it over this here it actually feels harder uh, let's see if you can get this in all right there we go I think we got it all right so we got the seal in definitely a tighter fit than the non-genuine one um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to clean up the fly wheel, the back of the fly wheel and the gearbox and probably prep those to get those ready to be reinstalled. Alright guys, um this I'm cleaning out on the gearbox and as you see right there is what the gearbox is actually supposed to look like. Realize that the the inside of the hose actually has on a lot more build up and I thought this has to be from years of this box being used not just from the oil issue that we had so I decided and I'm not gonna try to get it too clean at the moment um, I'm expected sometime early in 2018 to put a twin disc or triple disc clutch in here and I guess when I do that I'll look at taking down the box all together and giving it a really deep clean and putting it back up but for now we go we'll go back up with it in this condition it's clean to the touch but if you rub on it it obviously will come off okay so I've gotten all of the ARP bolts with some lube and some Loctite on them we're now going to install them um, based on what I read from the ARP um, leaflet in for the installation it says it has to go to 95 foot pounds so we'll talk those down to that um, and we'll see how that goes Okay guys, um, we got all the ARP bolts in, something that I just realized though is that the ARP bolts are actually 19 while the, let me show you one, the stock, um, the stock, sorry, the stock bolt is actually a 17, so it's actually a little bit bigger, 
So I gotta look for a socket now to fit those that will fit on the torque bar. bar. Okay, so we got the flywheel on and now the clutch assembly. Just have to torque down the pressure plate bolts. Um, we're gonna torque them down to 19 foot pounds of torque based on the Honda specs, and we'll go from there. Alright guys, uh, back here by the Civic, I don't know how far we got last time in the video but I had to stop because I broke one of the bolts for the pressure plate when I was trying to torque it. Um, so I'm going to try today to pull out that bolt and fit back the pressure plate and the clutch on the, uh, the flywheel. And I also got back the alternator, I'll show you guys that later, um, change out all the internals on that. So that's like a kind of refurbished alternator now. And I'm going to try to reinstall that. Hoping that I can get the gearbox on today, but that's really dependent on what happens with this bolt if we get through with that. So here's the bolt, um, I was actually hoping that part of it was actually still sticking out of the flywheel just so that it would have made it a little easier to do the extraction, um, but we'll go at it now and hopefully we can get it sorted soon. Okay guys, um, I actually got the bolt out, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, I actually had if you can see it there's like a let me see if I can get it to focus there's that little nib piece that was there so I was able to use a punch and just spin it hit it and it came around so it was easy to take out didn't have to use the extractor tool or anything like that on it so what we're gonna do now is go back up I got a boat to replace this one and we're gonna put back at the flywheel and see if we can get back on this gearbox today. Alright guys, got the gearbox back in, um, gonna now just put back together all the other stuff like the starting motor and that stuff, gonna reinstall those now, also have to put back in the axles and the half shaft, so that will be the next step. And then from there, I'll probably try to get in that. Um, I try to get in the alternator as well.
Okay, guys. Um, here is the alternator refurbish. Um, basically, these are the old parts that were taken out and replaced with new ones. So, hopefully, now we'll be getting the 14 volts at charging that we are looking for instead of the fluctuation in the voltage while idling and also at the um, once going through the rev range. So gonna install this now get this back in the car all right guys um, I think that's it for the night we've got back in the axles of let's see if we can get a light we have reconnected the shift linkages I've also um, finished install the alternator just have to put back on the belt and tension that up then tomorrow I'm going to look at um, I have to put in you can see so they don't get a chance to put in the starting motor but I'll do that tomorrow and then we'll tackle the oil seals but for now that's it guys Hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and if you are new to the channel, subscribe.